Wow, there it is! Whoa. What? Totally got that. Uh, isn't that crazy looking? That so gnarly. It did not bite me, but boy, did it make me jump. Does the worm feel any different when it does that? Yeah, I can feel its body like tense up. Whoa, there, it goes again. there it is! Ugh. What's it doing? It's puking all over me. Ah, uh, uh, gross. Oh, it stinks. Oh yeah, it does. Oh man, gross. In most areas around the world, when the ocean tides recede, they reveal a hidden coastline that is made up of shallow intertidal pools, many of which are filled with colorful plants and bizarre looking marine creatures. However, when the tide pulls back from the inlets and estuaries around Harpswell, Maine, you are often left with an endless expanse of mudflats. These exposed layers are formed when mud is deposited by the tide, and while they may look like a barren wasteland, they usually support a large population of wildlife. Today, the Brave Wilderness team will be joined in the field by Anthony, who is a professional licensed bloodworm digger. For nearly 40 years, he has been raking the mud flats of Maine, and on a good day, he can haul in around a thousand worms. All right, guys, so we have multiple cameras going today, and as you can see, it is still raining. Not too bad right now, but it's gonna be a slightly gritty episode, which is perfect because today we are looking for blood worms. It's gonna be muddy, it's gonna be grimy, and if we're lucky, we're gonna find some of these worms that are then probably gonna end up biting me. Isn't that right? That's right. Okay, well, we're gonna leave the big cameras behind, and what we have here, check this out. This Whoa. is a blood worm digging rake, and as I understand it, you kind of slam that into the yep. dirt and mud, yep. pull it back. Well, yep, pull it back, flip it over. Just, they say it's all in the wrist. All in the wrist, yes. okay. Now you're coming, right? You're not just gonna stand underneath the edge of the car? Uh, I mean, I could stay back here. No, 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 no. I can see that you've got your, yeah. your water shoes on. We're yeah. all getting muddy today. We're all getting in it. All right, you guys ready? Let's do it. All right, let's go. Yep. Digging in mud flats is truly a dirty job. And believe it or not, Bloodworming is a huge part of Maine's fishing economy as these marine worms are sold as bait. So whether you are catching the prized bloodworm or the slightly bigger sandworm, a heavy haul can equate to a pretty nice paycheck. However, the good news for any and all worms we catch today is that they will be released back into the wild. Now it's just a matter of getting into the mud so we can start digging. Well, you just let us know what you think the best spot is to start digging. Don't see, no one knows. No one you knows. No one knows. <laughs> it's tough. It's like you're walking on another planet. It's crazy looking out here. It's all kind of glassy looking. And this is every day for you, huh? Every day, Rob. Every day. Yep. How you doing, Mario? I don't know. It's a little intimidating. I feel like I'm gonna just like sink in. This is cool. I've never walked through anything like this before. Oh! I fell. Uh, oh my gosh. I thought you're used to this stuff being from the Everglades. Uh, we don't have this in the Everglades. You want to wash your hand by? Yeah. Thanks. Just wash your hand in the water. Just wash it around. There you go. There you go. There you go. A little better? All right. That's a little better. Yeah. I have to keep. Hey, you need dry hands? No, no, right. I'm serious. I'm serious. No, I'm serious, but I go through this all the time. You wait. You're good. You're good. Okay, so guys, check this out. Hey, Anthony, I see there's like a bit of a waterway going through here. Yeah. yeah. What sort of area are we looking for to start digging? What? I mean, look at oh, look at this. It's smooth mud. Is that worm? Are these worm, worm trails? No, that that looks like um. Oh, this. Yeah. It's uh, a. That snail. That's snail. a snail. Yeah. That's a snail. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so not worm trails. Well, I think this little area here looks like a good place to maybe start. Sure. Why don't you sure. show me exactly what the method is for digging? Ready? Yeah. Oh wow, it just peeled back like that. Oh, there's a little worm. No, there's that stick. No. Oh, it's heavy. See how this goes? Wow, it just peels back. It's, it's like cake. Like 
Oh, ooh, ooh. I thought I saw one. Oh, what's that? Is that a tapeworm? Or is that's that... a tapeworm. That's a tapeworm. Yeah, but they go. That's oh not what... my goodness. That's not what we're looking for. That's a tapeworm. That's a tapeworm. Don't get that in your stomach. All right, we're going to toss him back there in mud. Yourself... Gross. Ooh, stuck to me. Nope. This is like throwing five pound weights. Every lump of mud is about five pounds. That's five pounds right there. And Anthony is just throwing globs of mud effortlessly. Let me tell you who you don't want to get in an arm wrestling competition with. <laughs> Anthony. He's got Popeye forearms. It's crazy. It's tough because you step and you sink. You try to move fast enough so that your feet don't sink. See like that? You ready? <sighs> Winded, man. That is tough. That is a lot tougher than you guys could possibly imagine. The mud is extremely heavy. And as it pulls your legs down into it, you're trying to balance with your feet. My toes actually hurt from trying to keep myself webbed on top of the mud surface as you sink down. And there's nowhere to rest. It's not like I could just lay down in this mud. Well, I could, but then the environment would swallow me alive. I'm sweating bullets right now. Okay. Let's follow Anthony. We can't keep up with him. Come on, try right here. Oh, oh what's up? Oh, something big. Get it. It's not a blood worm. Is that a sandworm? Whoa, look at that. That's a beaster right there. But I don't know if it's a blood worm. I don't see its head coming out. Ooh, I'm putting it in the bucket either way. You got a big one. We're on him. We found the sweet spot. It's the honey hole. Let me see. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's what I've been doing yeah. every day. Yeah. What do you got? Let me see. Yeah, that's Whoa. That's crazy. That's, that's what I dig every day, worms like that. Woo! Oh, yeah. Look at its that proboscis is. coming out. Whoa! <laughs> Big yeah. Alien, oh isn't it? God. You can see Anthony's excited. Yeah. That means this is a good worm right here. Yeah. Wow, look at that. Woo! We've got full fangs. Alright, All right. we are getting closer to the honey hole. Yeah. I'm gonna put this beast yeah. in the bucket. Show Anthony what we found. Oh, okay. that's a sandworm! That's a sandworm? That's a sandworm, they bite too. Wow, okay. Yeah. Well, at least we found a big one. Woo! Hey, so mighty old. Blood worming on the coast of Maine. Blood! Oh, there's a good one! You got one? You got one? Yes! Oh, that's a good oh one. Oh, oh, it's a big one! Oh man! Yes! yes. Oh, got, one. got one! See my blood worm and song brought him up in the mud. Woo! A little muddy, but it finally paid off. I have slung probably 150 globs of mud, and I finally whoa! Don't drop me! Finally found my first keepable blood worm. All right, let me put it into the bucket. Nice. Ready? We got okay. it. All right. We got blood worms. We have a sandworm. At this point, I say we head back to a controlled situation and get these worms up close for the cameras. Woo! This was awesome. Oh man, I'm stuck in the mud. Nice. Mm. All right, guys. So we're back at base camp, and what I have here are two buckets. One that is filled with worms and another that just has some salt water. What I'm going to have to do is dig through all this gloppy mud that's filled with blood worms, rinse them off, and then place them into this clear container so that we can actually see them. You see, look in there. Oh, there's the big, oh, there's one of our big worms there. Okay. Is this salt water right here? Yes, this is salt water. This is a marine species of worm, which means that they live in salt water. If I were to actually put these worms in fresh water, it would kill them. So we do need to be rather gentle with them. Oh, there's a big one right there. Oh, that is, oh, that's one of the big, look at this. That's one of the big ones right there. Oh yeah. Oh boy. Yeah, that could give you a good bite. All right, get in there, buddy. Okay, I'm gonna move this bucket off of here. So get rid of the water bucket. And now we're gonna get up close with these worms. Now we do have a pretty decent size ragworm here. Anthony also called these sandworms. You see that? I think it's crazy looking. Right, look at the iridescence to its skin. And you can see, if you zoom in there, all these little legs on the side, those are called parapodia. 
and that actually helps these marine worms not only swim but also burrow and this also will get extremely long but that's about its most shrunken up state right there all right i'm gonna go ahead and put this one back into the mud bucket crazy Ooh, what do we have next man the moment we've been waiting for the blood worm which is exactly what we are going out after today. I wasn't even aware that we would find other marine worm species. And we got a whole container full of them. Um, now, I'm gonna just dump the whole thing into my hand. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Just so we can see what that looks like. What? Oh. God, they really look a lot like earthworms. Do they smell or anything? They smell like mud absolutely smell like mud and like most worms they'll just kind of stay completely limp in your hand like that and oh i can feel them moving they don't seem to move as fast as an earthworm no all right i'm gonna just kind of single out the biggest ones and you may be wondering to yourselves oh it's put out that one's put on its mouth oh that is a rather big one okay there are one two three four five really good sized blood worms but i think the biggest are these two right here in the middle so we're gonna pare this down i'm trying to let them get comfortable and expand out i also want to see if there's one that's going to perform for us with what we're all waiting to see which is that weird alien looking head that they shoot out of the think, front of their face i think face. that one that one you just this touched. one right that there one seems to be the most lively yeah that one also seems to be the the largest in diameter. All right, we're gonna put these back. Now, one thing that I must note up front, I'm not going to intentionally try to be bitten by this worm, but this is one of the only venomous worm species oh, in the oh, world. There, the right there, you see that? You see the head come out? They have a proboscis that they shoot out of the front of their head, which has four fangs. Those fangs, are made of copper and they're like this, right? It's like a grappling hook. Hold up, hold up. Like metal? Like metal, like the element copper. And those- So it has metal teeth. It has metal teeth. Like a Bond villain. Like a Bond villain. You got it, yes. This is like one of the most bizarre creatures. I didn't even know these things existed until we got here to Maine and somebody said, you wanna go looking for blood worms? And sure enough, this is that creature. Now this worm, is a predator and when they're out hunting they'll kind of slink through the mud and they're searching for crustaceans or small invertebrates and they shoot this grappling hook type head out of their proboscis four fangs dig in and then with those fangs they inject venom that venom paralyzes and sometimes even stops the heart of its victim and then they sit there and slurp up the innards like a slushy. now okay this is really cool you see how it's completely slinked out like this notice that coloration you see how purple it is? Yeah. It's all peach colored here and purple here. That's why they're called blood worms because their insides are actually dark red and the skin is semi-translucent and you can see that coloration right through there. Wow, that's cool. You can see like little bubbles running through the body. Yeah, isn't that wild? Look down the side of its body there. You see how it looks like those spikes coming off? It's like hairs. Yeah, those are heropodia. They're like little feet that help this creature to burrow and also to keep its balance if it's in deep water. All right, we got to get that proboscis to come out. Let me see here. I'm going to kind of just lay the worm out in my hand here like this. And you can see, look, it's kind of curling around, probably protecting itself. Can you see that little nodule up front there? What is that? That's a sensory organ. It's a little tentacle and that's how this creature explores its environment. It can sense chemicals in the water with that little front appendage. Look at up here, you see all that purplish coloration? Oh yeah. And it has a lateral line that runs down the length of his body. See that real distinct purple line? That's how you can easily identify this as a blood worm. Ah! Oh! Oh, it went for my thumb, did you see that? Totally got that. It did not bite me, but boy, did it make me jump. Wow, it shoots it out really fast. Wow, there it is. Whoa. What? Oh, isn't that crazy looking? That so gnarly. I think this one's fangs are just too small. Like it's coming all the way out. I see them. I mean, the fangs are pretty tiny, so I don't think I'm going to get bitten by this thing. Ugh. What's it doing? 
It's puking all over me. Ah! Ah! Gross! Oh, it stinks. Does it? Yeah. Oh yeah, it does. Oh man, gross! Ah! Oh, disgusting! Oh my gosh, did you film all that? I got all of it. Let me see. Ugh. Everything poops on you. Oh my gosh, even blood worms poop on me. Oh, look how long its body is when it's slinked out like that. And just like an earthworm, if this marine creature is cut in any area above pretty much this line right here, it can regrow parts of its body. Look at that, you can actually see the colors going through its body. Woo! Did you try to bite me there? I think it's thinking about it. Show me your proboscis. Ow! Oh. Yay! Did it bite you? He got me! <laughs> I got that! He got me, I oh. felt it, it was oh, a little dude. pinch. Let me see. Where'd he get you? Right there, right in the crux of my finger. It was like a little pinprick. Ah! <laughs> Does it hurt? Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. It kind of itches, actually. <laughs> yeah, did you see that? You think yeah. you got that? Oh, I know I got it. Oh, man. You just kind of whooped around and nailed me. <sighs> well, okay, I was successfully bitten by the blood worm. Definitely not as bad as a bee sting. Although, you know, if it was significantly bigger, it may have hurt more, but ah, it kind of itches a little bit. Like a little mosquito bite? Yeah, kind of like it, it startled me more than anything, but I could definitely feel it. <laughs> My heart's racing. Yeah, I, <laughs> I saw I, you I, guys jump back. You're not touching the. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, I mean, it really didn't hurt, but it was it was a prick. It definitely shot me backward. That was funny. Hey, coyote. Yeah. You're right. I'm all right, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was definitely one very wet very muddy afternoon, but we finally came across a whole bunch of blood worms. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. Ready to put them back out in the ocean? Let's do it. Sure you don't want to get bitten? Uh, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> At the start of this episode, I honestly had no idea what to expect when it came to digging in the mud for worms. But here's what I learned. First, it's incredibly difficult, not only to walk across the mud flats, but also to dig in the heavy, wet mud. Second, it's muddy, in case that wasn't completely obvious. And third, it's actually a lot of fun like looking for a needle in a haystack, or in this case, a bloodworm in a mud flat. There we go. That's a pretty good sized one right there. Nice. I'd say about as big as we found today. All right, guys, time to let the bloodworms and the sandworm back off into the ocean. Now you can release these creatures absolutely anywhere. They live up and down the coast. So this isn't exactly where I found them, but it doesn't matter because they're constantly on the move. They are nomadic, always searching for something new to eat. Maine's bloodworm industry continues to flourish and it's responsible conservation conscious diggers like Anthony who are helping to keep the population of these bizarre looking animals growing. By only taking market sized worms and returning the females and juveniles to the flats, his harvesting methods will ensure a bountiful population for generations to come. If you thought digging for blood worms was a muddy mess, make sure to go back and watch the episode where I got covered in mud diving to catch a smoky jungle frog. Man! Look at all that mud. And don't forget, subscribe so you can join me and the crew on our next big adventure.